My guest prophesies to leaders of nations, and it literally changes their destiny. Watch what's going to happen to you. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest amazes me. If I didn't know him personally, I'd have difficulty believing what I'm going to tell you. He has meetings with as many as four million people. Why would four million people come to his meetings? Because there are such outstanding signs and wonders that they're attracted. But uh, Peter Gammons, I still can't comprehend. I don't know if you can comprehend four million people coming to your meetings. It's amazing. Sometimes it just seems so unreal, the things that happen. Now, I've never yeah. been at your meetings, but uh, uh, are thousands healed when you have so many oh, people? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes when I ask how many have been healed during a, a series of uh, meetings across Brazil where revival broke out. In one week, we had 18,000 people had publicly testified that they'd been healed in the services. Well, you know and what I'd like? Tens of thousands I, I would Christ. like you to come into several of his meetings. I want you to see the reactions before and after. Uh, you know, even a child, uh, someone that uh, is uh, blind and can't see or deaf and can't hear or perhaps can't speak. Uh, let's go into a meeting right now. Peter, I wish I had been there. Yeah, it's wonderful. And one of the things that blesses me most is it's especially children that get healed in my services, which is just so precious to see a child that's been deaf and mute from birth or blind or whatever, uh, healed by the power of the Lord. Jesus Christ truly is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there have been times, I'm sure you know, on this journey, 37 years or whatever it is in ministry, where many times I felt like giving up, especially with the financial pressures of the ministry and things. But how can you give up when you see a little child that's healed and touched by the power of God? The call of God compels you. It's like Jeremiah, he says, I'm not going to speak anymore in his name, but I couldn't keep silent because his word was like fire shut up in my bones. I, I want, Peter, I want you to mentor our, our, our family in signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I believe you're never going to be the same because of what's going to happen on this television show. But in, uh, what was it, 1976, Peter? You're almost minding your own business. You're going to a nice meeting. Uh, you're a new, fairly new believer. Uh, and you're going to meeting, and a taxi pulls up. And what does she say to you? 
She said, Peter. Peter. And she looks at me with that knowing face. And I look at her and I think, I have no idea who you were. I didn't know that many people. So I'm looking at her like, do I? I said, do, do I, I know you? Me? She said, no, no. God, God sent, me, sent here, me here and he told, told me to give you a message, you a message that you'll that take you my healing my message and my healing and my power healing to the world. world. How old were you at the time? Uh, I was uh, 16, I think, at the time. So uh, what did this mean to you? And, did, and, you did you believe this I was thought, a person? <laughs> I just thought, strange woman. I, 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 here I was in jeans and t-shirt. I didn't look like preacher material. And uh, um, I said to her, are you coming to the service tonight? And she hmm. said, no. God told me to give you this message. I've given you the message, and I'm going now. She said, I don't have a car, so I hired a taxi to bring me here just to give you this message, and now I'm leaving. And the taxi left. And I'm standing there thinking, strange. You go into the meeting, what happens? So I go into the meeting, and I'm just sitting there in the middle of the crowd. About 250 people were there in the service. And the speaker was a man called Edgar Webb. And I'd heard all about him and the incredible miracles when he ministered. But what I didn't know was the Lord had told him he was about to go home and that he was to pass on the anointing that night. Hmm. We're singing to God be the glory, great things he has done, the great old hymn. And everybody's singing it. And he walked in and just suddenly said, stop. And everybody looked stunned. He said, stop in the middle of the hymn. And then he pointed at me and said, you, you boy, boy, come, come here. here. I was terrified. I'm checking it's me. And they're saying, yes, it's you. And were, said, were there many you, people you in, in this meeting? About 250, 300 people. Okay, so uh, it's, I mean, he should not have picked you no, out. No, no, no. go ahead. And, and so I walked to the right. I'm terrified. I didn't know God very well in those days, so I assumed I'd done something wrong and God was going to tell everybody. <laughs> so I, I thought, you know, that was the shortest lived ministry. I get the call on the way here, and now he's about to tell everybody I've done something wrong. So uh, people said I was as white as a ghost. I walked to the front and he laid hands on me and he began to prophesy. And he said exactly man, the same words. You, you will take, take my healing message, message and, and my healing, healing power, power to the world. The same thing the, the woman in the, the taxi thing, did. Same thing. This is weird. And, and I <laughs> fell under the power of the Spirit about five times. I'd never seen this before. I kept trying to get up and the power of God hit me and I was down again. Eventually I managed to pull myself up onto a chair. And, uh, Did he give a good message? He didn't even preach. What? He, he gave, preach. He, gave this, he read a poem, I think, after this, <laughs> and then walked out the service. That was it. Walks out? Yeah. Didn't even minister to the people. Oh. Uh, and, 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 he and he leaves. So the people are like waiting to be ministered to. And this big man, a very large man, and there's a reason I'm mentioning his size, is he walks up to me and he says, Can will you pray, pray for, for me to be filled with the Spirit? Spirit? So I'm looking for the preacher because I don't know how to pray for people. He said, not him, you, you're the one who got the prophecy. I go to pray, Lord, heal him. And as I touch him, he falls under the power of the Spirit. And he was so big, he knocks everybody flying. And that day, God threw me out into ministry. People came up to me and said, would you come and speak to our youth group? Would you come and preach in our church? Would you come and speak to our but, home but, fellowship? But, but, let me get this straight. You're a 16-year-old kid. Uh, you have never seen someone fall over in the Spirit. You fall over in the Spirit. Then you start praying for people, and they collapse under the presence of the Spirit of God. What did you think? Well, this anointing was so strong. It, I, would, I would walk into kitchens, and people would fall in the Spirit. I even walked really? into the men's bathroom, you mean not... and people would fall under oh, the Spirit. No. I walked through a graveyard, <laughs> and these old people would no, fall no, under no, the Spirit. Don't tell me the dead would fall <laughs> I went to preach in an, in an Episcopal church, an Anglican church, and every person in the service fell under the Spirit. The anointing was just so intense. Peter, hold that thought. When we come back, you're going to find out about a special sign that God has given Peter, and I want him to mentor you. Look, he, he spent 37 years learning things of the Spirit. I want him to give you some nuggets. Don't go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Call now and receive Dr. Peter Gammon's Supernatural 12 book series, Power in Your Pocket, and the pack of 52 healing cards. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9132. It's so vital that you get this Power in Your Pocket series. 
37 years of revelation from God. And what I share in these books, you're not going to discover it in any other book. The 12 books include Bless Israel. Through this book, learn how to obtain the supernatural favor of God as you bless the Jewish people. Through El Shaddai, you will understand how to obtain a new intimacy with God like never before. Through his books, 200 Secrets of Financial Blessing and 20 Keys to Your Financial Breakthrough, find out how to tap into God's supernatural supply for your life even in the midst of bad economic times. Learn how to receive your miracle through his anointed books, Six Steps to Healing, How to Receive Your Healing and Keep It, and through his dynamic book, Divine Healing, Questions and Answers. Plus, you will receive five more revelatory books. This 12-book series is going to revolutionize your life. Every moment you get an opportunity, you can fill yourself with the Word of God. In addition, receive these 52 healing cards while supplies last. Don't miss out on getting Dr. Peter Gammon's anointed 12-book series, Power in Your Pocket, and the pack of 52 healing cards. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9132. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9132 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here, Peter Gammons. I am amazed at the gifting God has given him. I, I had the privilege of meeting Catherine Coleman, and someone received, I mean, th this woman, as far as I'm concerned, Peter, I, I haven't seen the degree of miracles that I saw under under her ministry. I mean, just all over the auditorium, they would, it would be a, an eruption. Uh, and I've interviewed people 20, 30, 40 years after they were, received their healing and they still had their Isn't healing today. Yeah. Uh, but you yeah. are, have been given a very unique sign. Many times he'll line 45 deaf and mute people up, 45. And many times, everyone will be healed. How, how did this gift start happening? I asked the Lord for a notable sign that's that notable. couldn't be denied by the unbelievers. Well, you know, that's, that's called a messianic miracle because yeah. that's what Jesus did. And I will line them up and I will tell the people, if, you, if they're not all healed, you don't have to believe. But if they're healed, you have to believe. And thousands receive Christ in those things. I announced during these gospel events around the world that on a particular night I will pray for those who are deaf and mute. And sometimes they empty deaf and mute schools and bring the children along and we see them. Uh, one so of the, what do the schools do after they all can hear? Do they become <laughs> hearing schools? <laughs> there's, a, there's, some, there's some funny stories. One of the funniest was in Zimbabwe. They bought these five deaf and mute boys and uh, God healed them. The next day the pastor comes to me, he says they weren't healed. I said, what do you mean they weren't healed? They heard and they spoke. He said, well, I keep asking them questions and they're not answering. I said, well, of course they're not answering. They've never heard words before. You've got to teach them like a baby. You've got to teach them how to speak. They don't understand hmm. what you're saying because they've never heard before. Oh, he said. And I went back a year later and he had taught them all how to speak. Uh, He'd taken them on and personally trained uh, them. If you think that's something, what about someone that had molten lead in their, poured into their ear. I mean, there is nothing, no apparatus for he, uh, healing. Tell me about that person. Yeah, uh, I, I'm praying along the line, and I always do what Jesus did. What happened to you? I am a mechanic. I was working on a vehicle, and hot lead went into ah. my ear and ah, destroyed my ear. all of the inner ear. That is horrible. Yeah, so I told the people, what we need is not a healing. A healing is a repairing something. What we right. need is a creative miracle. And suddenly my finger disappears inside this man's head. It was horrible. <laughs> Recreate the part of this man's ear that was destroyed. Suddenly I felt like, it felt like little mice running around inside his head. I felt all this touching my finger. And it started to push my finger out of his ear. And then... I what, whisper, what, what, what was pushing your finger? God out? recreated inside his so ear. So there was no room all for the your parts finger. That were missing, yeah. So <laughs> that he ended up with an eardrum, and I couldn't put my finger back in his ear. It was just like a normal ear. And and when I whispered, 
in his ear, he could repeat everything I said, and they could hear, and I got him to block the other ear, and everybody could hear. Now, now, I know that you see all the time people deaf getting their hearing back. Yeah. That's a notable sign that God yeah. has given you. But that had to do something, not just to him, to you, once you realized what God had done. Yeah. Well, some people, they're like, oh, I can't believe these kind of things. But for me, it's an everyday occurrence. It's, it, 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 it's something that happens as common as more than I have hot meals. Now, now, in addition to signs and wonders, God has made you a revelation teacher. Uh, I have never seen some of the revelations that I hear you teach. For instance, you take the, the names of God in the Hebrew and you string them together uh, and you, each one is a progressive revelation of God. Uh, why don't you teach a little bit on that? Yeah. Um, I have a teaching called El Shaddai where I show God reveals himself in the scriptures in the order that we need to know him. Uh, in many theological schools, they come up with these complicated theories that maybe Genesis was written by several authors, the Elohim author, the Yahweh author, mm -hmm. but God reveals himself first as Elohim, the great creator God. And that's the first thing. We need to know the greatness of God. Uh, and then God reveals himself in Genesis chapter 2 as Yahweh, the loving redeemer. The moment man comes on the scene and he creates man and woman, he changes his name and he becomes Yahweh, the redeemer. Even before man fell, God is already presenting himself as the solution. And, and, and so next we need to know him in an intimate and personal way as the loving redeemer. And that's the difference. Uh, when the devil refers to God, he always uses the word Elohim. When unbelievers, for example, in the discourse between Job and his friends, they all talk about Elohim. And there are many people who believe in God, but they don't know Yahweh. You have to know him personally. If you ever said to an unbeliever, you say, they say, well, I believe in God. Yeah, they believe in Elohim, but they don't know Yahweh. You need to know him as the loving redeemer. Then he reveals himself as Adonai, which mm -hmm. means Lord. And people need to understand, God is Lord, and surrendering to his lordship is not coming under the rule of a tyrant. It's closing the door on the devil, because God has no right to intervene on our behalf until we surrender to him and give him that opportunity and that privilege. And so the next stage is to surrender to his lordship. And then when we surrender his lordship, he reveals himself as El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough, the God who will provide for us in an abundance. And this is a problem for many Christians. They're trying to get to know El Shaddai. They're trying to get God mm -hmm. to prosper them and meet their financial needs and bless them with an abundance. But there's a journey. And it's interesting, then when we study through the life of Abraham, he had that journey. He meets with uh, Elohim. Then he comes to know him and he calls him Yahweh and God reveals him. Then he surrenders to him as Lord and, and calls him Adonai. And then God says to him, now I'm El Shaddai. And, and his son uh, Isaac refers to God as El Shaddai. Obviously, God, obviously Abraham had taught his son, this is the God, he's the God who provides. You, you know what I think is fascinating? When Peter shares this revelation, it's not just teaching. He's lived it, he's experienced it. And when he talks about the name of God, El Shaddai, miracles break out. <laughs> Don't go away, we'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Sid Roth has found the key to worldwide revival. This is God's time to reach the Jewish people with his love. Messiah Jesus has torn down the wall dividing Jew and Gentile. The two together form one new man to reach the world. God's method to reach the Jewish people is through signs and wonders. This is why our website, SidRoth.org, is jam-packed with tools to equip you to move in signs and wonders, understand Israel, and the Jewish roots of the church. Log on to SidRoth.org today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Peter Gammons. And uh, during the break, Peter gave me a revelation that God had shown him of how to close the door on the devil. And I want him to tell you. It's very important to understand that God spoke to me and said, the devil cannot rob you 
on my territory. He's got to get you over on his territory to rob you. And the devil's territory is fear, doubt, unbelief. When we're walking in love and faith and, and obedience, the devil can't rob us. And so the devil, every day he's trying to entice you over onto his territory where he has a right to rob you and God has no right to stop him. And so we're living in a spiritual battle. There's a spiritual warfare going on. And it's important to know how to close the door on the devil. When Satan comes before God and talks about Job, God says, behold, he's in your hand. Now, some Christians have the misunderstanding that God handed Job over to the devil. God doesn't hand his children over to the devil. He says, behold, which means, look, look, he's already in your hand. How did he get in the devil's hand? Well, we see in chapter 3, verse 25, he says, the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. And so the devil uses our fears, our faith, and our words as a door to bring into our life. In other words, he's using spiritual laws against us. It's thing that I mm -hmm. teach on a lot, how the devil so uses a, the spiritual laws. he's a legalist. Laws. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He comes with a book. He's not only a liar, but he's also a lawyer. <laughs> and then that's how he comes, on the legal grounds, because he knows that God is just. I, well, I preached this in a church in London one time, uh, Kensington Temple, the largest church in London, and I made a comment, and the pastor told me later, he said, I nearly fell off the chair when you said that, but he said, the more I thought about it, the more I rose, it was true. Uh, uh, and I said, God is just, and he's even just with the devil. And the devil realizes that. If the devil has legal grounds to rob the believer, God has no right to stop him. So that's where we have to learn. And that's what I spend a lot of my time writing books and preaching and ministering to teach people how to shut the door on the devil so that he can rob them no more. Peter, I am very intrigued with your gift of prophecy. You prophesy literally to heads of nations that changes their destiny. Uh, tell me a few. Yeah, uh, the president of the Philippines, when she was a university lecturer, the Holy Spirit came on, on me. She had come to one of the services I was speaking at, and I prophesied over her that she would become the president of the Philippines, and I prophesied for six hours over her what she had to do, and uh, within months, she went from, she ran for senator, won. She went from senator to vice president to president. Hmm. Uh, in Honduras, the president of Honduras called me and said, can you come out? I have a crisis. The teachers have been on strike for two months, and, and I want you to come out and see if you can do something. I arrive at the presidential palace. I said, yeah, I'll come today. So I got on immediately on a flight. I arrived at the president. There was about 30 television cameras and news reporters there, and the spirit of prophecy came on me. And, and I began to prophesy to the teachers the effect that it was going to have on the children and set the whole nation back and that they had to think about the future of the children of Honduras. The next thing the head of the teachers union gets up and says, okay, we'll make a deal now. And in 24 hours after more than two months of strikes, it hit the front page of the, the newspapers uh, in Honduras. Within less than 24 hours, the teachers all went back to school again. In Trinidad, uh, the uh, Prime Minister had lost the election, Patrick Manning had lost the election, and had asked to meet me. So the night beforehand, the Lord kept me awake all night telling me things to tell him and gave me five things that I specifically had to tell him. So I meet him the next day and I shook hands with him and I said, thank you. Because I'm thinking, how am I going to say this? I just said to him, thank you. And he looked at me strange and he said, thank you for what? I said, because of you, I didn't get any sleep last night. And now he's looking even more concerned. I said, because of you, the Lord had me awake all night telling me to tell you things. <laughs> and God's given me five things that you have to do. Well, I don't know what he thought they were, but he said, would everybody else leave the room, please? <laughs> so everybody left the room. I told him these five things and tears came to his eyes. And he said, when I lost the election, I promised God five things that I would do if I was reelected. And you have just told me the five things that I promised God I would do. And, and within months of me meeting with him, the person who'd beat him in the election was put out of office by Congress, and they put him back in as prime minister again. Uh, you know, you, if you uh, teach on finances, and God's giving you a revelation of 200 keys to expand your finances, I, I mean, I'm, I'm in awe over the revelations that God is giving Peter. Uh, but tell me, what God told you about 
America a few years ago. Yeah, well, the first thing, and this is one of the most important things. Some people say the Bible is complicated. It's not complicated. The same themes run from Genesis to Revelation. And we need to understand why did Adam lose everything in the first place? How did he fall? And people say, well, it's through sin. When you take what God has not given you, the devil has a right to take what God has given you. And that is the principle that runs throughout the scriptures. It's the same principle of closing the door on the devil. And that's what I teach in... And, and uh, you, you, you had explained that America is under a curse. Yeah, the Lord spoke to me in the year 2005 and said, the nation I love is under a curse because the believers are not being faithful with tithes and offerings. And the verse came to my mind, this nation is cursed with a curse, bring the whole tithe. And, and, and there was such sadness the way the Lord spoke to me as though it wasn't his choice, it wasn't what he wanted, but he had no option because he's a just God. And the Lord said that this financial crisis was coming on the nation. And I began to preach this and I began to, and the Lord told me to sell my house. And so while everyone else at that period was buying, 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 I sold my house at the peak. It was quite an amazing story. But, but you not only did that, but he told everyone in his congregation to do the same, and many people saved a fortune. Uh, unbelievable what happened, and I told people, get your money out of stocks and shares. The, those that are supposed to be managing them are spending all your money, and they're gonna go bust, and I, I named companies, and all of them went bank bankrupt. What should people do right mentioned. now, based on what God's telling you with their money? I think the most important thing that I can say at the moment is be faithful to God with your tithes and offerings because these truly are the end times. I can't give you a word that things are going to get better. I do not believe things will get better. I believe we're living in the end times. And the Bible says in the end times but, that a but I bag some, of gold won't buy a loaf yeah, of bread. But Peter, I have some good news. I agree. Things aren't going to get better, but they're going to get better for me. Amen. And they're going to get better for you. And, and I can tell you as a fact that you are going to, God wants to prosper you for his kingdom's sake. Now hear that last part, mm -hmm. for his kingdom's sake. Money doesn't mean anything, but having intimacy with God through Jesus is everything. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread, never. Call now and receive Dr. Peter Gammon's Supernatural 12 book series, Power in Your Pocket, and the pack of 52 healing cards. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9132. It's so vital that you get this Power in Your Pocket series. 37 years of revelation from God. What I share in these books, you're not going to discover it in any other book. The 12 books include Bless Israel. Through this book, learn how to obtain the supernatural favor of God as you bless the Jewish people. Through El Shaddai, you will understand how to obtain a new intimacy with God like never before. Through his books, 200 Secrets of Financial Blessing and 20 Keys to Your Financial Breakthrough. Find out how to tap into God's supernatural supply for your life even in the midst of bad economic times. Learn how to receive your miracle through his anointed books, Six Steps to healing, how to receive your healing and keep it, and through his dynamic book, Divine Healing, questions and answers. Plus, you will receive five more revelatory books. This 12 book series is going to revolutionize your life. Every moment you get an opportunity, you can fill yourself with the Word of God. In addition, receive these 52 healing cards while supplies last. Don't miss out on getting Dr. Peter Gammon's anointed 12 book series, Power in Your Pocket, and the pack of 52 healing cards. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 91. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9132 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. My guest moves in every miracle you read about in the Bible. And thousands of those who learn his secrets do it too. Thank you.